All right, what's up, guys? VV back with another video. Whoop, and where's my face at? Oh, there I am. And in today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out a pretty hardcore fear, theory crafting, brainstorming style video. We're going to be doing a, a type of video I haven't done in a long time on this channel. I used to call them comprehensive deck building guides or comprehensive deck strategies or something like that, deck building strategy guides. And uh, we're going to be doing one of those on Kairos today. Um, <clears throat> these these videos usually run a little bit longer than my average videos. But here's the thing. I like to do these on leaders that are not very well represented in the meta, off meta leaders. That's how I got into Black, Yellow, Linlin. I think I've done one on Garp. I think I've done one on uh, Z and, and, a, and a few others, I think, as well. Even from other games, I think I did one on, I think, like from Flesh and Blood way back in the beginning of when I started this channel. But today's video, guys, we're going to be checking out Black, Yellow, Kairos. It's a little bit overshadowed right now by Black, Yellow, Luffy. And just like how Rebecca was overshadowed by Blue Black Sok Sakazuki. So we're going to be trying to make that work. And uh, don't worry, guys, this is going to be a long video, but I will have some timestamps down in the, in the comment section below. I'll, I'll like pin a comment section or I'll pin a, one of my comments that'll have all of the, you know, the breakdown because th we're going to break this video into three parts. Uh, the, the first part is going to be the leader overview and breaking down card by card what works well in this deck. And then the second part will be about they're going to be games I did on the sim. I, I, I put together three different um, decks and ran through about six or seven games on the sim. And, and that's what part two is going to be about, where we go over those games, kind of an, analyze it and see how the deck runs. Excuse me. And then finally, part three is going to be us breaking down those decks because I have them saved in the sim. And we're going to talk about, you know, in conclusion, where do we go from here? And, and guys, please, you know, fill up the comment section with your questions, your suggestions, because I just like to try to make these off meta leaders work. This is one thing that really attracts me to TCGs is trying to make leaders work that aren't supposed to or that that aren't very good, quote unquote, you know, or allegedly. So, okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and dive into it, guys. Y'all know what you're getting into. We're going to be doing a lot of that, or a lot of brainstorming, a lot of thinking in this video, a lot of reading in this video, and, and kind of analyzing what cards might work, you know, seeing what, what might make this, this uh, what might take this leader to the next level. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, real quick, before we get started, this is from EB01. So, we, we still got a good two months to make this leader work, you know, because if it's something you want to have fun with at Locals, this would be perfect for that, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, we still got... About two months over here in the West before EB01 launches, which is what this leader comes from. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. Uh, two more things I want to talk about. There's a few um, concepts that are not going to work for us, you know, as for Kairos. Let me read what the leader does, and then I'll and then I'll explain it. So this is a 5,000 power four life leader that has activate main once per turn. You may turn the top card of your life face up and then KO up to one of your opponent's cost zero characters. So number one is we don't really need KO. We don't need like, you know, six cost Sakazuki. We don't need cards that KO realistically. We just need ways to reduce cost and then reset our life to, to back to face down so that we can KO again with our leader the next turn. So things like that, rearranging our life. So Katakuri, this is a good card, right? And there's a lot of different directions we can build Black Yellow Kairos, guys. We can build, he is, a, he is a Dressrosa leader, by the way. I didn't read that at the bottom. He is a Dressrosa leader. So we have access to Dressrosa cards. Uh, we have a, he's black and yellow, so we have access to Navy. We have access to Big Mom Pirates, Sky Island, Land of Wano, <clears throat> just all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, Katakuri is not really a great option in a deck like this. And then one more card that is surprisingly not a good option either is Kairos. Kairos, he, you, you can protect him fine with any kind of leader. Literally, it doesn't have to be Dressrosa. But the on-play requires you to have Rebecca as your leader, That the on-play KO. And like I said, we're not really worried about KOing anything. We have that built into our leader. So just get that out of the way. So those were the two things, guys. We, we don't really care about KOing anything. And, and you know, cards like Katakuri that put cards to the top of our life, if it's face up, then it doesn't really benefit what we're trying to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into this. So there's Kairos. We talked about what he did. First up is Scarlet. Now you'd think, okay, didn't you just say Kairos is not going to be good in this deck, the character? Yes, but that's okay. There's another option with Scarlet. Scarlet says you may, for those who don't know what this card does, it's a two cost, zero power, 1,000 counter character with activate main. Trash this character. Play up to one Dressrosa type character cards other than Scarlet with a cost of three or less from your hand rested. Then give up to one of your opponent's characters cost minus two during this turn. So there are two other cards in particular that go very, very well with Scarlet. The first one is One Legged Toy Soldier because that is a, you know, you could just trash that card to minus three to a character. 
that's not ideal because you're getting rid of this card from your hand and this 2k so it's not great but it's better than nothing but the second one that's much better is this card here Suleiman or Suleiman however you say that he's a three cost 4k with 1k counter that's already pretty decent stats it's not bad but it, it has on play and when attacking if your leader's dress rosa type which ours is give minus two costs tough one of your opponent's characters and then place one card from the top of your deck in the trash so it does help us mill a little bit. That, that might have some synergy later if we, if we choose to go with uh, Rebecca, the you know the four calls Rebecca that can grab stuff back. Um, but ultimately, if you use Scarlet with this card, you can minus four to a character for the turn, and you did at least establish this body, right? So so there is that. Um, so that's decent. Next up is Laboon. Same idea here. This card is actually very good, and I didn't get a chance to test this card unfortunately. But it's a four cost five K with a one K counter. Okay, that already is just fine and dandy, right? Like, like okay, my, you know, my, I'm listening when, when I hear stats like that. And then activate main, you may rest this character and give up to one of your opponent's characters cost minus four for this turn. Well, right next to Kuzan, right? Appropriately so. These are both these are both four cost five Ks, but they're not the exact same. For Well, first of all, for obvious reasons, right? This is an animal type and this is a, a navy type. This has a 1K counter. This draws a card, but they both can minus four. Laboon can do it by resting himself, which is dangerous, right? Because then they can take him out. But then Kuzan can do it, you know, at any time he attacks. Excuse me. Laboon is probably much better than Kuzan for a deck like Kairos. Because if we play this out on turn two, right? Yeah, where we have, where we have four Dawn if we're, if we're on the draw. And we rest him and then KO their four cost character or less. They're probably going to attack into Laboon next turn. So he kind of acts, he kind of acts as a 1k counter as well. And if they don't, then we get to use him again next turn. So that's kind of the idea. That's the concept there. So this card's very good. Kuzan, we just talked about a little bit. He's very solid as well. Any form of cost reduction is what we are aiming for. That's something I probably should have spent more time on right before we dived into the, or, you know, dove into this part of the video. But this, this card is absolutely excellent for what we're trying to do. It's a 2K counter, and you can minus two costs to something and get them in range of your leader's effect. Helmeppo is kind of just, this would be kind of a techie card for, it, it has a yellow, you know, trigger, play this card, and then give up to one of your opponent's characters minus two whenever you attack, and he, he can potentially get to 5k. This card's kind of more of a cute type thing, it, it, I don't think it's really practical for what we're trying to do, but I, I at least wanted to mention it because it's cost reduction. Borsalino is just something we're, we're going to be able to stand behind, it's going to block for us, and we're going to be able to defend off of it. Uh, probably a very important card, probably a very important card for any deck that, that splashes black. So Kuzan, uh, this does have KO built in, but the most important thing is it reduces everyone's cost by five. <clears throat> Excuse me. So theoretically, you can play this card on turn, well, 10 Dawn, whenever you have 10 Dawn, KO a five or less from his effect, and then flip the top card of your life and KO another one from your leader's effect. So that does have a lot of potential. It has very strong potential like, like Black Purple Z did, but at the same time, Black Purple Z was able to KO an 8 or less with his effect and swing for 6 for the turn from from the effect. It's not as good as Black Purple Z's leader in interaction, but at the same time, you know, this is a different color pool and it's still very strong. Being able to KO two 5 costs is, is very powerful, or it's potentially very powerful. Isho, <clears throat> excuse me, anytime you can work in hand destruction into your deck, it's a good thing. And then Isho also has Dawn times 1, you know, attach 1 Dawn so you can just swing for 10 at people. And you get minus three cost to everything on their board. Um, I won't spend too much time with these. I'm trying to talk as fast as I can, guys, or else this running this this video will run way too long. Um, and if you guys have any comments or questions, please listen down down in the comment section below. Uh, Virgo, this is a solid card. Oh, one more thing I will say about Isho is this card does battle for another slot in the deck, the eight cost slot. So it's not exactly our best option, but it's not a bad option. So next up is Virgo. This is just a strong Navy 2K counter, and, and it can't be KO'd in battle. It's, it's more or less here for the Navy 2K counter stuff. Honestly, I, I could just take this card out. Okay, next up is Khalifa. Now, this is a 2K counter that's very good. Draw two trash two, so it's fixing our hand, and it's minus two cost for the turn. So if you were able to combo this, you know, if they didn't KO your Laboon for some reason, or if you were able to protect it, and you can go minus four here, play this to do another minus two, draw two trash two, and now KO it with your leader effect, hitting a six or less that is potentially very powerful. So Khalifa is something we should consider. Fukuro is, again, just a very solid defender we can stand behind. Um, any kind of strong blockers, I like to put those in here. Brand new, if we're going to go the Navy package, you know, I don't even need to explain it. If, if we choose to go Navy, this is, this is an auto-include. Orlumbus. For those who don't know how Orlumbus works, 
this is a great card that can KO one of your Dressrosa characters. It has to be a Dressrosa type character, and then you can minus four cost to something for the turn, and it also mills the top two cards. Get this, though. <clears throat> he can even KO himself to do the minus four for the turn. So if you need to, you can use it like that in an emergency situation. So this card is just excellent for what we're trying to do. Uh, Gas is a 2K counter for Dressrosa. Uh, I don't know why this card's in here, uh, but it, it is at least a good 2K counter. Cavendish, 5 cost, 6,000 power, Dawn times 1. This character can attack active characters. If we can get down the Corda Coliseum, let me add, I don't know why this is still highlighted like that. There we go. If we can get down Corda Coliseum, which we can run in this deck, because we have a Dressrosa leader, well, all of a sudden, Cavendish is actually a, a very, very strong card. Because even if we don't have the, the extra KO effect, if we don't have a lot of ways to reduce cost to the turn we play him, it doesn't matter because we're going to attach one and swing seven at an active character. It's going to help us make it to the later stages of the game where we can just beat them over the long, you know, over the, the long, uh, over the game. Uh, next up is Sabo. I don't even need to explain this one, just extremely powerful. Suleiman, we, we, we uh, kind of talked about that with Scarlet. Th those go together very well. Hajardin is actually pretty solid in a deck like this because it's a six cost 7k. It's, it's Dressrosa as well. And guys, if we are going to run Dressrosa, then we will have the Rebecca search engine as well. You know, there there is a very nice Dressrosa engine currently, so so we do have options there. Hajardin, though, is very good in this deck because you can play him, and you don't have to rest Hajardin, so he's protected. You can rest your leader to minus four to the cost, and this effect doesn't require you to have your leader unrested. It just requires you to have a a the top card of your life that is not already flipped over face up. It just has, it just has to be a, a face down card. So Hajardin is actually pretty good here. 2k counter Bartolomeo. This is a blocker and Dressrosa searchable. And back to the Gats card, guys. If we do choose to go like heavy Dressrosa with Gats, then of course that would make sense to go that as your 2k counter. But I think we have way better options for 2k counters we're going to go over uh, later in the um, when we get to the yellow cards. Okay, next up is Monkey D. Luffy. Again, this is all going to come down to if we choose to go the Dressrosa package. Otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's kind of the same, um, same position as Cavendish where we can just play this and if we have the core to call CM down, we can start smashing into their board. Uh, Leo should not even be in here. He, he would be if we were going specifically Dressrosa. Rebecca is good because it's a searcher. Um, One-legged toy soldier. This is just a nice 2K counter that can cost reduce. That is actually very good. The four cost Rebecca. Again, it can grab back any of the cards we just looked at. Everything but the one cost Rebecca. You know what I mean? All of these cards right here that we were just looking at. It just can't grab. Um, it cannot grab cards that cost less than three or more than seven right so that that's its only limitation but it can play anything that's a black card that costs three or less just an incredible card gecko moria we already know what this card does this is kind of the new star of the show we, we do have op06 over here in the west now this is basically the best black uh, boss monster card in the entire game it'll be able to grab back your four cost a uh, four cost and a two cost you know it's just incredible value uh brook <clears throat> excuse me Brook is one of those cards. I don't. I didn't want to add any removal in here unless it was absolutely necessary. Like for example, Kuzan, like we were talking about earlier, or Brook. Brook actually is more important than he seems because he can trash cards. So in other words, if your opponent has a Borsalino down, well, we, we effectively don't have a way to deal with that unless we do go address for a package where we're attacking into their board with a Cavendish and a Luffy. But we're gonna have if we have Brook and we run a lot of cost reduction, he can basically take care of almost anything in the game, right? Outside of like an Anel or something like that. So just very powerful. Perona, getting over into the... Um, I didn't have a lot of Thriller Bark cards in the in the list, but Perona is definitely one of them because this card can attack your opponent's hand. It's a 2K counter. It's a 4 cost 5K. It's a 4 cost, so it goes directly in line with our Gecko Moria. And you can cost reduce if needed to on, with the on-play effect. Sengoku, this is a promo card a lot of people probably have not seen. Uh, this is the kind of card you attach one Dawn and then all of your opponent's characters are minus two for the turn. He only costs five, whereas Isho costs eight. So it's kind of a faster way to get, you know, board, you know, the entire board lower, like with the, with the cost. But it's a little bit weaker than Isho as well, because this one only does minus two and Isho does minus three. Toshigi is just a great 2k counter that can also minus two cost uh, character. Now we get to Hina. Hina is an absolute monster in this deck, because remember, we already have KO built into our leader, and there's no Dawn that we need to, that we need to invest like, you just play Hina, minus four of that character on play, and now just KO it with your leader's effect if it's now zero. So Hina is an absolute, um, she's the star of the show. There's, I don't think there's any way around it. She's just the straight-up star of the show. 
Uh, there's some other very good options as well we're going to look at too. Next up is Helmepo. This is like a miniature version of Hina. It's a 2 cost 3k as opposed to a 3 cost 5k, but it has a 1k counter and it does fill the 2 cost spot, you know, for, for Gecko Moria if you have to combo something like that. Because think about it, guys, in a deck like this, if you needed to, if you needed to, with Gecko Moria, if you have these cards in your trash, you can grab back a Hina and a Helmepo and then get a minus, you know, hit someone that's a 7 cost or lower. Right, so that's just, you know, that is that is very powerful. Very strong potential there. Uda's just a good card that can just, like this 2 cost 3k film Uda beer. It cannot be KO'd by leader effects. So if you're constantly KOing every single one of their characters as they play them, which is what you're trying to do, by the way. That, that is the goal of, like, th this kind of deck. You'll see when we get to the games. This card is actually very solid for that. Um, next up is Shirahoshi. This is the other star of the deck, in my opinion. Like, I think Hina and Shirahoshi are the absolute best cards in the deck. Um, Shirahoshi is a 4 cost, 0 power blocker with a 1k counter. Like, that's all fine for what it is. But on play, minus 4 to a character. Again, so this is just another version of what we already, what we already have in Hina. Okay. I, I included this blocker here, I, just like I included the uh, brulee as well down here at the bottom somewhere. These uh, trigger blockers are always very good to have. And, you know, you know, I didn't add the... the I didn't actually add uh, this stage but it'd be kind of cool with uh big mama chanter to go like this hell Meppo, and the uh the uh brulee so vv brulee and hell Meppo because they're all three cost cards that you can play I, I don't know it'd be something to get to consider but but for this deck it's probably not the way to go but these little blockers are really good to come by however it's gonna be hard to fill those spots because we have a card like viola or viola however you say this this card is a two cost zero power 1000 counter blocker with on play choose one of the following you can either look at all your opponent's life and then rearrange them in any order or here's here's the one that i like the most for what we're doing turn all of your life cards face down and this is dress rosa searchable by the way this comes out in eb01 for those wondering um this card is uh this card is really good like when i start when i started testing this card it was like okay this is really nice because you can also play it back with Gecko Moria to do the effect again, and it's a blocker. So if you need to, like, let's just say if you need to, you need to get back a Hina and Viola. Well, you can play the Viola unrested, so you have a blocker who's active, and then play the, the Hina rested. You see what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a lot of potential there. Uh, just really strong synergy with the deck. Very strong card for what we're trying to do. Next up is Flampy. Any card that... So, so now we're getting into the yellow cards. So with black, it was all about what cards can give us cost reduction. With yellow, it's really all about who can help us mess with our life. Who can help us like make it where we can get more value from our life cards. Um, Flampy, probably not the best in this deck like it is in black, yellow, Luffy. But we can potentially draw the top card from our life. It's like, say our opponent does not want to attack into us so that we can KO their characters. Okay, well then in that case, I'll just pay one with this 2k counter here. Draw that card so it's out of my way now. And then draw another card from, from my from my uh, you know from the card's effect from the top of my deck, and now I can KO again if I have cost reducers. So so it is it is very very strong guys uh, in in this deck, but I think we I still think we have better options. Next up is Shirahoshi, the two cost card. Again, this is a, I didn't get to play test this one, but I think this card's very strong. Two cost, zero power, one thousand counter. When this character is KO'd by your opponent's effects. Place up to one card from the top of your deck on your life, and it has blocker. So basically what it's saying is you have to block me, right? Like, you just have to be able to block me. Um, or, excuse me, you, you have to allow me to block you. That's a better way to say it. Because if you KO me, I'm going to gain the life that you probably were going to take anyway if I didn't block. So so, so that's, yeah, that that's basically the idea there. Uh, very strong here, and it's a two-cost card, like I said, so it goes well with our Gekka Moria shenanigans. Next up is Sanji, and with this card, I'm also going to talk about Daifuku. Where is he at? Did I pass him? This card here. They're both the same idea. So Sanji is, he's a 2k counter, first of all. 2 cost, 3,000 power, 2k counter. Dawn times 2 when attacking, so swing for 5. You may add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand, and then add up to one card from the top of your deck to your life. So you get to get the top card out of your way that you just flipped over to KO something with your leader and then put a new card there. So this card has a lot of potential and Daifuku reads the exact same way, but he is a 4 cost 5k with a 1k counter, but he only requires Dom times 1 when attacking, but the exact same effect. So those cards are very nice for what we're trying to do. It's going to be a matter of trying to find like what we can actually fit in the deck and make work. Uh, next up is uh, Shirley, or Charlie here it says. Sh well, Shirley is, I, I think, which, what her name is. 
This is a three cost, 3,000 power, 1,000 counter blocker. Already decent stats, but listen to what it does. Look at the top of your or your opponent's life and place at the top or bottom of its under stack. So this is, we would want to use this more for us, right? So after we do a KO effect and we play this card, because it's an on play, when we play this card, we can now move that card out of our way. Again, we're trying to get around our opponent, not attacking our life to save his own characters. We don't want to allow him to have that luxury, right? We want to be like, oh, okay, you're not going to attack? Well, then I'll just take my life with a card like Flampy, or I'll just rearrange my life with a card like Shirley. Okay, so we can keep trucking, right? We can keep KOing and, and, and just keep, you know, keep going. Uh, next up is Charlotte Cracker. Uh, any kind of trigger card like this is not really great for us, but it's also not bad. But if we are going to go like a Big Mom Pirates type package, which is what's going on here, then Cracker does make sense. Because when they see like, oh, you know, this isn't the, how do I say this? The trigger cards are not incredible for what we're doing. I'm just going to say that right now. Smoothie, you might have a you might have a case for because you can draw that top card of your life and get it out of your way. So I'll keep Smoothie, but I will say in general, Charlotte Cracker's not really what we're going for. Because we also want to be pretty aggressive. That's another thing I didn't mention in the beginning. We want to stay attacking into them, right? Because because we're we're not gonna we're not running um we can't run ten cost Linlin, -Lin, so we don't have a lot of ways to gain life. You see what I'm saying? Like, yes, we can run run Yamato, we can run Katakuri defensively if we need to. There, there's a lot of options we could run to gain life, like with the Land of Water package. But that's not what we're trying to do either. We're trying to KO our opponent's board and just, you know, run them over in the game. Uh, next up is Charlotte uh, Chiffon, however you say this. This is, a, this is a card I'd never seen before until I started uh, doing, you know, researching this video. This is a two cost, 3,000 power on play. You may trash the top or bottom card of your life. So again, that's what we're trying to do, right? And then place up to one card from the top of your deck at the top of your life. So it literally just gets a card out of your way. Now, this is not a great card, like the stats on it, and now we have two really, really good options in the, in the two-cost spot, like Shirahoshi and Viola, but it is something at least to consider. Where were we? Right here. Smoothie, we talked about a little bit. This card is actually is actually pretty good, because when you attack, you can, you can move that top life card out of your way, so you can use your leader's effect if needed. Charlotte Pudding. Now, this whole thing right here, these, these Charlotte Pudding and uh, Parasparo, <clears throat> these are only here in case we choose to go Big Mom Pirates. I'm just putting those there for that. Shirahoshi, Shirahoshi is just an incredible card. And even if you reveal this off the top and, and they can see it, what are they going to do? They can't, they can't stop you from drawing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of those cards. It's like, yeah, it's, you know, th this card is coming whether you like it or not. Right. So it's just a, it's just a good option there. Beige. We, are, or we already know what this 2k counter does. If we need to go more defensive, that's what this is for. Same thing with Sanji. If we need to build the, if we need to start building the deck a little more defensive, depending on what your meta looks like, what your area, your locals look like, these are two really incredible options. Yamato gains us a life and it's face down. So think about that, guys. There will be a combo we'll be able to do later in games where potentially, this is all just potentially, Yamato to KO like a three or four cost character with her effect, gain a life, you know, and then we can also use our Ice Age to KO another card with our leader's effect. Again, just, you know, potential there, some potential. Uh, good stuff. Next up is Anel. Um, if we if we choose to go the Sky Island package, I'm not going to go over much detail here. If we choose to go the Sky Island package, we have access to Anel, Ohm, Gadatsu, Satori, Shura, and Holy, right? And this other card here, Aza, or Asia, whatever her name is. This is a one cost 2k counter from Sky Island on play. Check this out. Look it up to one card from the top of your opponent's life cards and place it at the top or bottom of, of your life cards. It's not good for ours. It's like it's not as good for what we're doing, but it can allow us to get around our opponent's triggers if we choose to go the Sky Island package. But otherwise, I'm going to get it out of the way. Um, Onami. This is just a good two cost card. Like we were talking about earlier, you can give your, your, your leader banish and it, it triggers off the top to KO a five or less. So this is just a good card to add. Kikinojo, Hiyori, Momonosuke, and Nekomamushi. These are like just really strong Landawano options. And by the way, so is this card, this Monkey D. Luffy we'll talk about in a second. But if we need to go a more, um, like, I don't know, a more mid-range route, I think these cards are probably auto-includes. Because Hiyori, this is a 2k counter that I don't think we can ever replace. This allows us to, you know, just get the top card out of your way. That's, that's already face up put something in its place like a Kikinojo that you can now play out for free or use with your leader's effect to KO something. It, like this card is incredible. Kikinojo is incredible. Momonosuke, um, he's not as good with his effect for what we're trying to do. But if we, you know, how do I say this? Excuse me. If we need to, we can use this to gain life. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it's better than nothing, right? It's, just, it's still just a really good card. Neko Mamushi, same thing we were already talking about here. There's some other Landowano characters as well, but they're not as good as what we're trying to do with, with these uh, these four. Now, this Monkey D. Luffy here, this is a promo card, and it is it says it's a 3-cost 4K, 1K counter, Landowano searchable. When attacking, you may add the top or bottom. I said I said Landowano searchable, like we can do that in yellow. That's more of a green thing. Sorry, guys. But you can at least use this with um, Momonosuke's effect if you need to. Anyway, when attacking, you may add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand. This character gets plus 1,000 for the turn. So it'll allow you to get that card out of your way again. And remember, that's what we're trying to do. Charlotte Katakuri, same idea where we can move our cards around. Look at the top one life card from the top of your of, of your or your opponent's life and put it and either keep it on the top or and wait, I can't even read. And put it either on the top or the bottom of the life area. So we can just move cards out of our way if we need to. And then we can potentially get rushed if, if we're losing, if we're below in uh, life. Daifuku, we already talked about. Brulee, we talked about. Charlotte Pudding is actually really good in this deck. The, the two cost 3k, 2k counter Charlotte Pudding. Because on play, look it up to one life card from the top of your or your opponent's life area and put it either on top or bottom of, of life area. So it's, we're moving stuff out of the way. Charlotte Lin, Lin again, if we go the, the Big Mom Pirates type, we can gain life like this or, or hit our opponent's life. This card, same idea. You may add the top or bottom card of your life to your hand. So it's just getting cards out of our way. Land of Wano, 2k counter. This is the new Edward Newgate coming out in the ST13. So, so this is coming out in about a month or so for us over here in the West. This this card here is a 6 cost 7k, 1k counter. On play, add the top card of your deck to the top of your life cards. Then look at all your life cards, place one of the cards on the top of your deck, and, re and return your remaining life cards in your desired order. So for those wondering, if you have a card already revealed, it will stay face up. That does not change. Wherever you put it, even if you, I think even if you put it on the top of your deck with this effect, it will stay face up. So that way, unfortunately, you can't reset your life like that with this card. But you, again, you can rearrange it and move cards out of your way and, and adjust your life to however you need to. Next up is this card, Emporio Ivan Cobb. Now, this is pretty good for us, and I wish I had play tested this. It's a 3-cost, 4,000 power, 1k counter blocker with on play, trash the top or bottom card of your life. So you're getting the card out of your way. And then reveal 1-cost, 5 character card from your hand then place it face down on the top of your life. So, you know, it, it does have to be exactly five costs, so you'd have to work something into the deck like these three brothers, the, you know, the black or yellow, you know, uh, like Sabo, black or yellow Luffy, black or yellow Ace, things like that. That's a card I didn't add, by the way. Th there's a five cost Ace that I did not add for some reason. <clears throat> Excuse me, a card like this, this definitely could go, you know, in, in what we're trying to do. This is coming out in SC13, again, in about one month. This is just a 5 cost 7,000 power rusher. That's what it is. Has no counter, but you do have to have two or less life cards. Uh, decent, though. Uh, decent for what we're trying to do. Next up is Shanks. I did play this one game, but I never got to... Like, I, I had it in my hand, but it it wasn't it didn't feel good to play it. We'll talk about that later. But this is a 7 cost 7,000 power character. Whoops. With on play, flip one of your face-up life cards face down. Wow, so that's exactly what we want, right? Then, if your opponent has seven or more cards in their hand, send up to one card from the from the top of their life to the trash. So this card does seem very good, and I need to do a little more playtesting with it. I think it has a lot of potential in this deck. Makano gets the top card of our life out of the way, 2k counter. Ice Age and Great Eruption are just absolutely incredible in a deck like this. Ice Age more so than Great Eruption. Ice Age is really good because it allows us to just straight up... And actually, the more I think about it, I don't, th I don't think you can, you can play Great Eruption like on the sim for the, uh, I'll, I'll put the ace in the, the, that spot and uh, take out the great eruption. But you uh, currently you can't even play the uh, great eruptions on the sim for the east if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but anyway, ice age is just incredible because with this kind of with this kind of leader effect, it basically says pay one ko five or less. Just absolutely incredible. If we go to the skyland package, this is a new card coming out in EB01 called. It, it, I'm not going to say the name, and I can't stand when they do stuff like that. Um, but, but this card right here, four cost main, put up to one cost seven or less NL from your hand or trash. You hear that? Or trash into play. And then trash the top of your life card so your life becomes one. So if you're on one life, guys, or less, you're paying four to get NL out of trash, and now he's coming into play swinging because he's not coming into play rested. I think this, I think this effect is extremely, extremely good. Uh, and look at the trigger. Draw two trash one. Sure, I'll take it every time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Next up, we have Thunderbolt. Gets the top card of our life out of the way. Chaos of five or less. We'll take it every time. El Thor is, is is just whatever for this deck, to be honest. Like, I don't know. We're not really trying to be, like, super defensive. I can't really stress that enough. 
And and that's why you know this card shouldn't be here either. I'm just going to remove both of those because because like I said, those cards are going to be banned soon. Well, excuse me, reject will be banned soon. And Elthor, we're not really trying to be defensive. Now, Soul Pocus is nice if they want to give us a life, whatever that is technically defensive. But if they lose a life, that's really nice, and we can get as a trigger. That's potentially very good. Now, the reason we have this two cost four cane here is it allows you to arrange your life cards. That is really that is very nice. It's just hard to fit events in in, in the deck nowadays. And then we're going to talk about Corda Coliseum. Okay, guys, so we do, we've blasted through all of the character stuff. And if you have any questions on any of these, please don't hesitate to put it down in the comment section below. But now we're going to get into the fun part. Now we're going to get into the games. Okay, so first up, we've got Purple Yellow Croc. And let me make sure the sound's off. Make sure we're on 2x speed. I think I already had it set. Yep, we're at 2x speed. And now I'm just going to kind of break down these games. This was a version I was trying that was more Dress Rosa focused. So right away, I'm coming in. I'm playing out my one cost Rebecca. He just passes. I'm like, okay, swing five at life. And I just swing five more at life with my with my other character here, my, my uh, Rebecca. And uh, again, I'm going to have the deck list at the end of the video, basically in the final part of the video. Um, and Purple Yellow Crocs is another deck that seems really interesting. We'll have to mess with later. Um, but okay, so he smashes into Rebecca. I don't care. Let that get KO'd. Right here is where I start realizing, man, I really want Ice Age in the deck for sure. It's just so good. But he played out that four cost Black Maria or Black Maria. I KO it with my leader effect, flipping over the, the top card. I swing six in the, to the Miss, Miss All Sunday. He defends it, and I play out my other Rebecca. Now, notice this. <clears throat> Excuse me. If, if I don't move that top card, I can't KO anything, right? So I want him to take life for me, about one life every turn. Okay, you're going to swing eight into me. So I'm like, okay, I actually, I either take this one or the, or I, okay, I did, I did take that one. And then I block out of this one with a 2k and I think, a, I think a 2k and a 1k. Okay. 2k and the slam on there. Very nice. And again, I want to take about one life a turn. This is very similar to how black, yellow, Linlin plays where you want to take exactly about one life every turn. So that way you're getting access to your triggers and you're able to, you know, get down to your leader effect at a comfortable spot. So swing five into his five. He's playing very defensively, and I'm completely fine with that. I'm like, okay, yep, give me your whole hand. I'm going to play out Orlumbus here. I KO my one cost card with Orlumbus to drop its cost. I KO it with my um, with my Kairos, the whatever it's called, the Miss Golden Week, I think her name is. Okay, he swings. He plays out another Miss All Sunday. Swings six into my life. I just took a counter out because I know he's going to swing one more time. I take this one, and now I'm in a very good position again. Because I'm going to reduce the... I'm gonna, well, excuse me. I'm going to swing five. I'm going to get this Missile Sunday. And then it's like, okay. Now, what I have to do here, I'm going to swing five first. Okay, actually, I'm, I'm trying to decide how I want to get rid of this card. It's like, okay, let me let me get rid of my Orlumbus first in case he gets like a Thunderbolt off the top. Because I want to play out my... um My... What's her name there? The Yamato to gain life. Okay, swing five into life again. He 2k counters out. I play Yamato to KO the Missile Sunday from the Orlumbus, reducing the cost of it. I've got a 9k body down. I've got two life. He takes out my, my Hina there, plays out a Black Maria. And now I'm feeling pretty good. Right? I'm feeling pretty good about my position here. Uh, but but notice in my hand, I'm, I'm out of cost reducers. So that is a big balance in the deck is how are we going to balance the cost reducers with the, um, you know, I don't know, life interaction or 2k counters and, you know, things like that. Which, which I think by the final deck, you'll see it. I think the final version of this, of this deck that I play is the closest to what I think it should be. But I, I always want to know what y'all think. You know, tell me down in the comment section below. So I played out Hiyori to set my top life card as um, Kikinojo. So I just established a body. I can't block that 10k. But look at my board. There's no way he survives here. Seven at life, nine at life. Okay, and that should be game. Very good. All right, next up, <clears throat> excuse me. Next up, we have Kaido here. Let me make sure this is at 2x speed. And I think this is, this might be the same version I was just running. I think, I think I ran, I think I ran each deck twice of, of the decks we're going to look at. But this might be a different version. I can't remember exactly. And we'll look at them all at the end. So here I just play out of Hina. That might not have been the best play, but he didn't play anything. So I'm like, okay. Let me see if he wants to play something out. And he didn't play anything again. So I'm like, okay, I see where this is going. So I'm just like, okay, swing five. He uh, counters out, swing six. And I just try to keep on pressure here, try to like dump his hand. 
I play out a blocker here because again, I probably I probably shouldn't have played out the blocker though. That's the one thing I will say I wish I had not done. Or if I was gonna play out the blocker, I, I should have made it the Momonosuke. Okay, well I guess it wouldn't matter. Well actually, yeah, it wouldn't matter because King can only hit a, hit a uh, I think it's a four or less, right? So he just takes out my board there. That was super not good. Uh, and I am still trying to learn the deck, of course. You know, that's still something going on. So here, I'm like, okay, let me try out this uh, this uh, new gate, right? And I'm like, uh, do I want to? Excuse me. So I use my leader's effect first just to see what I have on the top to see if I could have gotten anything. But it's like, wait, there was no reason to do that because I'm going to rearrange it anyway. Um, so I put that card up, up back on top of my life. I think it was Gecko Moria. And then I just keep the, the, um, the Kuzan on top. Okay, swing six at life, he 2Ks out. This, this first version that I was playing, I felt like was the least... But at the same time, hang on a second. Yeah, I don't think this is the Dressrosa version. I think I only played that one time, and that was the first deck we just saw, the first game we saw. This one, I think, is more of, like, all over the place. Okay, so he swings that. I take it. Plays out Queen. He has four Dawn left. He can still swing nine in my face if he wants to, or establish another body. I do have a 7K on the board where I can start fighting for board. Yeah, he's going to go seven at face. <clears throat> He leaves two Dawn open. That's always a scary sight, right? That means he probably has either like double Blast Breath or Hell's Judgment or something like that. So, swing six here. And he hits me with a Hell's Judgment, which is really unfortunate because I wanted to play out Gekka Mori this turn. But that's okay. That means I just won't... Um, and notice what I do there. Pause one second. That means I just won't swing with my, um, my Edward Newgate this turn. But I did minus four to the... I played out Gekko Moria, brought back Shirahoshi and Suru, minus four to king, minus two to king, use my leader effect to pop it, and now it's your turn. And I've got, my board's looking pretty good now at this point. But watch what happens here. I remember this game now. <clears throat> so swing five, huh? Uh-oh. Leaving ten dawn active, I see. And then this will be the clincher right here if he swings ten, six with this. Yeah, I'm like, okay. So now I know he's playing out... Um, I know for a fact he is playing out 10 cost uh, Kaido. <laughs> like each, and he does. And that was devastating. That was like, holy crap, man. That, like, that was really, really unfortunate. But at the same time, the nice thing about running uh, any deck with black in it is we have Gecko Moria. And honestly, I think I should have just played out the Gecko Moria here and not even worried about this, um, this Kaido. But at the same time, you know, I, I went about it this way. So swing six at life, play out Momonosuke. I just need a blocker at this point. He's down to six, or he's, was he down to five? Uh, five dawn. I think he's going to go up to seven, and then up to eight with the, with the uh, the event. And honestly, this game doesn't look that great for me because he still has four life. He still has a lot of wiggle room to survive here. He's taking a long time. Sorry, guys. I do have it on two x speed, right? Yeah, we still have it on two x speed. Okay. So right here, he is going to swing six at life. I take it. Then he's going to swing 12 at life. Again, sorry guys, he's just taking forever. I have it on 2x speed, he's just taking a long time. Because right right here, it's like, I feel like, last turn I probably should, okay, he just quits. I think he just decides he's not going to keep going like this. But last turn, I think I should have just played out the Gecko Moria. So that way I have a body to fight against his, and I don't have to worry about trying to cost reduce him. Because notice, I can almost, actually, I can cost reduce him in hand. Because I could go 3, 6, so I can go Hina, Hina, Shirahoshi to put him at negative two cost and then KO with my leader effect if I needed to. So that's probably, I don't know, I probably should have done something like that. But that's okay. Like I said, we're still, we're still learning the deck. Okay, next game. This is going against Anel. And right away I can see the Hiyori the, and a little bit of Landawano package. This is this is the all over the, the version, uh, all over the place version of the deck. And honestly, the Hiyori... Every card you see in my hand right now, they're all stars in this deck. And that's what makes me get to my final version whenever we do get to it. Because the way Hiyori allows me to set life cards, I'm like, absolutely, man. Like, I'll take it every single time. So here he goes. He's going to swing in for six. I'm going to 2k counter out because he has four life, right? So if, if I had countered here, or if I had not countered, I couldn't get my um, my Kikinojo because he has four life. Yeah, they have to be at three or less life. He, does, he sets his own Hiyori trigger. And I'm going to smash into his face here and I want to ensure that I can get my Kikinojo. That's 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 my mindset here. Like, yep, we're going in for nine. I want to make, I mean, he might have taken a hit for five. I know that, you know, he set his top life card, but I didn't want to risk it where I don't get my Kikinojo for free when he's about to attack this next turn here. 
assuming he attacks next turn. Okay, so he he uh, trashes that Rigo card. That card could be decent in um in Kairos, but again, guys, you got to remember we're not trying to. We don't need KO. We need ways to reduce cost and, and ways to fix life. Okay, so we get Kikinojo. This card is just good. Period. If you're running yellow, you it's almost like with um Gecko Moria. If you're running any version of black or yellow, you should just be running Hiyori, Kikinojo, and Gecko Moria. It just makes sense. Okay, so he uh, he gains a life with his little um, Momonosuke interaction there with, with Hiyori. And I don't have it on 2x speed, do I? Sorry, guys. That was a close one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a less than ideal spot here. Th this, this is like, okay, Enel's already a hard enough leader to deal with. But I have to double up my cost reduction just to get rid of his Momonosuke, which cost me a 2k counter. But, you know, you do what you have to do. He is a, he's countering very aggressively, which I was really surprised about. And who knows? We have no idea how good these players are, right? Like, this is just the sim. This is not the, um, this is on the Eastern sim, too. So there's no telling how good these players are, how experienced they are, or anything like that. And I, I will say this. I, I like the Kuzan in the list, but I'm starting to think that I should have been going with Laboon because Laboon is just an immediate cost reduction. And that's the one downside to Kuzan is you can't just cost reduce the turn he comes into play. Unless you have some way to give a guy haste in, the, in, like in some future set. Okay, so n notice I'm in this position right now where I can't... Um, like, my, my top life card is flipped face up. So I do need to... You know, I do need to... I can't KO anything until until it's face down or I get it out of the way. But if there's nothing on his board I need to worry about currently. I get a Kika Nudge right here and I just cancel the other. I don't need the the, the cost reducer. And and now I have a I have a 9k and a 6k on the board. That that feels pretty good. So just talking about the deck, like what feels good about it so far, is like what I was just saying with the black and yellow package. Going Gekka Moria, going uh, Kika Nojo, having this way to just KO built built into your leader, that that does feel nice. Like that is a very good part of, of the deck. He catacurries my Gecko Moria to life. I was I was flabbergasted when I saw that because typically speaking, an NL player will push their Shirahoshi back to their life. So I, I bust out another. I, I've used three out of four Surus. That's how strong that card is, by the way. Suru is so nice in this deck because she helps your Yamato get in range of, of cards that normally couldn't. Okay, so so he does a Yamato of his own and KOs my Kikanojo. I gain a life from it because they're at three, three or less life. And, um, yeah, I take that top life card, and it was a Momonosuke. Sorry, guys, my, my nose is really itching from, uh, I, I had to shave my mustache down, if y'all can't tell. I had, I had to shave it down, because it was, uh, when that pollen gets kicked up, it just gets stuck in whatever hair you have. So, that hair right there under my nose, I, I just can't do that. Okay, play out Momonosuke. I didn't see what else I did there. Oh, I played out the Kuzan and the Momonosuke. So, so, so swing six, play out, um, Kuzan and, uh, and Momonosuke. All right, and he's going to swing seven at me. I need to start taking life. I'm like, absolutely, please take. I need you to hit me one more time, too. Okay, now here is the situation where Hiyori is so nice, where we can combo it. Well, actually, I probably won't even need it right here because I, I have another Yamato in my hand. So I can just, well, let's see what I do here. I'm, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. My opponent does have more than five cards in hand, so I can hit him with a Perona to minus three. To a card and then minus four with Kuzan, but that's still a little bit under what I'd need to hit his, his Katakuri or his, or his Yamato. So here, I'm just going to swing in here for six. He counters out, and I'm just going to Yamato KO his Yamato, and I don't want to swing with my Yamato just yet because I don't have a follow-up swing, and he can just do a life cycle with his leader's effect. So th there's no point. Uh, and, he, and he can start attacking into my Yamato. So right here, I'm just like, ah, I'm just going to pass. Okay, what's he doing here? So he plays out a seven cost Lin Lin. And I, I I decide to just trash a life. I'm like, okay, whatever. I just need to lose life because I need to I literally need to free up my life space there so I can start KOing characters with my leader's effect. Because now, if he doesn't take out my Kuzan, I actually can get in range of hitting that um Okay, he's gonna swing eight into the Kuzan. I think I counter out here. I do. Because it's like, no, I'm gonna use that. Like, you're pretty much going to lose your board at this point, right? Because I can, I'm going to be able to swing four. Well, I have to do this in the right way if I want to do the Perona. Let's see if I do this correctly. Because what I could do right here, let me pause it for a second. The thing that I could do right here is swing five into Anel's face, right? And then minus four to the seven cost Linlin. 
then, or actually I would Perona first because if he counters out, then he'll have less than five cards. So what I should have done here, guys, is Perona first, minus three to the seven Lin, then swing um, for, for five at leader, minus four to the seven Lin, and then I could KO it with my leader effect and then do everything else I was going to do this turn. But let's see what ends up happening. Swing 10, swing 10 into uh, Katakuri. Yeah, so now, now I can't even do the, the thing I just said because he doesn't have five cards in hand. But that's okay. I have, I have other options. So now I'm just going to... I think I just established Gecko Moria here. Yep, swing 10 there. <laughs> now, I think... You see, I've got my mouse over the the ten, or the uh, the 7 Lin. This is where I realized, oh, I just messed up really bad. <laughs> that's okay. Again, I, I did the same thing. This is like deja vu where I play out the 8-cost... Um, the uh, Gecko Moria and just establish a uh, just establish my Kikanojo. But my board right now, guys, I have four life right now, and my board is very intimidating. Like I've got three nine Ks on the board, a five K and a six K that you know that do things as well. He swung thirteen, or excuse me, he swung what was it? I think he swung twelve into my um, my Yamato, and I literally just double two K'd out. Where it's like, well. Now I should be able to just win the game, depending on what kind of triggers he gets. Let's swing seven at life, see what he gives me. Okay, so he's thinking about this. He knows. I mean, the, the end has got to be near for him. The, the end is in sight. Let's see what he gets for a trigger, or if he gets one at all. Golly, guys, I, you know, I, I thought I had this on 2x speed. I do. The guy's just taking a while. That, that happens on the sim sometimes. you got to wait for these guys to get, uh, play. So he just... he, he uh, he got a beige trigger. Notice my um, my Yamato cannot attack now. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, that, that's unfortunate. Well, I'll just go ahead and clear up your board. Okay. And I probably could have tried to go for game here. So let me see what happens. Swing seven. Let's see what he gets. Okay, but he counters out. So that's, that's pretty good as well. But I still want to swing six more to get that last card. So now he has no life, right? Now it, he, he, we're, we're past the uh, the Anel trigger. Establish a blocker so he can't KO something I don't want him to KO. And that's game, right? There, there is no way out of this one. Okay. He's going to try to 200 million volt tomorrow and just run something over here. But again, I have a blocker if he tries to take out one of my big characters, that, like, like, uh, like Gekka Moria. Okay. Block out. And then he's probably going to smash into something or just play Kikinojo. Game over. GG. Okay, now, that was uh, the third game. Next game. Yep, you win. Very good. That that was the best game that I had up to that point. Like, it felt the best for sure. Uh, let me make sure this is on 2x speed. There we go. So this is against a Perona. And I think, again, I think we're running the same... We're, we're running just like a general deck... I moved a lot of these cards around, and we're going to look at all the decks at the end. But you'll just kind of see how things are, like, with this. Like, I, I, don't, know how, I don't know how to explain that. Like, you'll see, like, there's nothing really special to talk about here. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. But the final two games we're going to look at, not this one, the next two games we're going to look at, I believe, are the deck that I think is in its best variation so far. Um, okay. So, you know, Hina's not going to survive, right? She is not, she is not going to make it past Perona. Like, oh, look, she made it. Just kidding. Ryuma hits her. <clears throat> you know, that, that's because they run four uh, Ryumas and like four x rakes typically. So th there's no way that Hina was going to survive. But okay, I just do it again. I play I play out Rebecca to pop that thing, get it out of the way. And that's fine. Now, I do have Viola in, in this uh, in this deck. So maybe maybe this is the beginning of the decks where I have the uh, the package where I want it, where, where I started feeling really good about how it was playing out. Because that last game went very well against Anel. And I know that probably wasn't the best player. You know, we have no idea what skill level these people are that we're playing against on the sim, but th that game felt very convincing. You know what I mean? It showed like there was actually some potential for the deck. Okay, so he Brooks, uh, so there he used Brook, by the way, to remove the two cards from my trash. Because Brook has two effects. He can either hit a four or less and trash it, as opposed to KOing it, or he can make you put up to three cards from your trash at the bottom of your deck. So he did that. He got rid of my Hina and my Rebecca, which that was, that was a pretty solid usage of that card, to be completely honest. Okay, swings five there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to rest my Momonosuke because I figured he was probably going to minus cost to it, and then and then um, you know hit it with something else. <clears throat> so he has eight dawn here. I'm assuming he's about to play a Gecko Moria, but he might not have drawn one. I've had that before where it's like, man, I really wish I had this card in my hand, but you just you know you don't always have it. Swings nine at my at my at my, uh, my leader. 
Okay, Suru, so he does do exactly what I said. I should have blocked with it after all. But if I hadn't blocked with it, maybe he could have saved something there. You know, it, it makes sense to do it the right way. Yeah, because he had to use a 2k counter. I think it was probably worth it in the end. Okay, so I have 9 Dawn here. Um, and I have Viola in hand. So swing 6 into Brook. Let's see what he has in his hand here. He does not counter out of that, so that leads me to believe he has no counters in hand. Like none. Not a 1k, not a 2k. Or if he does have a counter, it's like a 0 cost 3k trash 2. Okay, so play out Hiyori. Minus 5 to that character and KO it. So notice what I did there. I just grabbed... Let me pause it real quick. So what, what I did there is I used Hiyori to flip over my, um, my Viola. Then I used my um, Ice Age to KO his Ryuma. Then I used my Momonosuke to put the Hiyori on top of my life so I gained a life that turn and took out one of his characters. So that is kind of the deck playing at like maximum potential, I feel like, where it's like, okay, that's a very solid play there. Like that had a lot of value. Uh, okay, so he swings at me. I'm going to take it because, you know, I need it. I need to preserve as much counters as I can. Swings in for five. I just counter out with, with this Viola because I know I have another Viola coming. Hits me with his fourth Ryuma, I think. Third or fourth Ryuma. I'm like, okay, you know, but I did top deck Ahina. So that is just a straight answer to that. However, I have to adjust my top top lifeguard. What I probably should have done there, it's, it's hard to say. I probably should have grabbed my bottom life card and then set a top life card on top of it to see what my bottom life was. Um, but either way, I'm able to take out the Hina and, and all that good stuff. So, let's see something. All right. Play out the Sabo. My guys are protected for the turn. He can't hit me with his fourth Ryuma if he has it this turn. So, so that's good, right? That's good at least. Okay. So, loads up seven on Suru. It's like, tell me you have nothing in your hand without telling me you have nothing in your hand. I take this hit from the Viola, or to get my Viola here. Zero into zero there. And I'm ready to play some Gecko Morias, right? That's that's the, the spot we're at now. Honestly, I think what I should have done here is swing seven first. Yeah, and I do. So swing seven first, see what he gets. The only thing he could have gotten there, I think, is technically like a Punk Gibson or something. Because I don't think they run many things that can deal with Sabo. So I play out. So notice this. Let me pause it. Ah, let me go back just a little bit. There it goes. All right, Paul's right there. So I play out my four cost uh, Kikinojo and Viola, but I played out the two cost um, active this time because that's a blocker. Viola's a blocker. And now I'm using her effect to look at his top two cards. And now I know what's coming. He has a Thriller Bark Pirates or Thriller Bark Stage and a Nupe coming. So, you know, that that's good. Any, any kind of information is good. I know I don't have to deal with any kind of triggers. It's pretty safe to attack into him. And my board is getting very strong at this point. That's what Gecko Moria does, right? Uh, okay, so he's going to rest my Viola. He's got 10 Dawn active here, so I'm thinking he's probably going to drop a 10 cost Dofi, unless he just doesn't have it. Because I feel like he would have done it last turn. Yeah, I don't think he has it. I don't want to go down to my last life like that. I want to keep at least one life on the board if I can. Swing 5 and a life, that's going to take a response from him. Okay, swing 7 there. Uh, looking back... I think what I should have done there is actually played out my um, Rebecca, getting back my um, my five call Sabo, and then I could protect my whole field like that. That's what I should have done there in my personal opinion. But this this way works as well. It's a little more aggressive, but it works as well. Black Green doesn't have any rushers that they run. Who knows? Maybe they'll run Hody Jones in the future. But but yeah, that would be interesting, right? Hody Jones and uh, Black Green Perona, but but no, probably not. Probably doesn't work that well. So he gets into Nupe, draw two trash two from the, the card we just gave him from life, the Thriller Bark Stage. But we know his last card is in Nupe. He swings 13 at life. I do take this. It's a Kikanojo. I'm like, okay, we're about to go 7, 7, 7, 9, 9, or whatever it ends up being. 9, 9, and then 9 again. So again, another pretty convincing match. You know, like, like the deck is showing some potential. It's showing some promise there. Okay, next up we got Blue Green Sanji. Um, I have played this deck recently, guys. Blue Green Sanji. Like, I've played the leader, Blue Green. It is a surprisingly good deck. Okay, now this is when I have the deck, I think, pretty much where I want it. This is a really short game. I, I do want to use as an example there, real quick. Because I have, like, kind of the start that I want. And, and that's another thing, too, I should mention. Going first in this deck with Hina in hand feels really good. Going second with um, uh, Shirahoshi in hand feels really good. 
So, so those are two cards that are just outstanding. All right, so right here, three cost, boom, and he's just. I think he's going to end up just quitting the game right here. Hang on one second, because I, 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 notice how notice the timer down there. I I only wanted to show this for a reason. Okay, swing six at me. Okay, and he messes up. He actually pulls back that card instead of the Mihawk, and he, and he leaves the game. Okay, but real quick, I want to go back to where we just were. Let me hit play. When I played this card right here out, so he finally passes the turn. Boom. This is a really, really nice position to be in. Because notice what we did. We're, we're t like this is, this is the strength of the deck. If, if the deck's going to work, I think it has to go off something like this premise. Where you go turn two, either Shirahoshi, the four-cost blocker that minus fours, or Hina, that minus fours, and you KO their first card, and you went first. So now when they attack into you, you let them hit you. You don't you don't counter out because you want to draw whatever that top life card is. So that way you can KO another card the next turn that costs four or less. B because, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what this guy does understand, I mean, it doesn't matter, right? He, he left. But even if he um, does this correctly, whoops, let me go back. Even if he pulls back the Mihawk, right? Well, guess what my next play is going to be? Or guess what my play is going to be next turn? It's going to be swing six into the, into the, What's his name there? The uh, the Zoro. I'm going to swing six into the Zoro. He's not going to block it. Or excuse me, he's going to counter out of it, right? Then I'm going to KO him with the Hina. Like, or the or, or excuse me, I could go six into him again. Actually, see, I just I just uh, figured out what I wanted to do even better there. Swing six into him again because I'll have five Dawn. And then Hina KO him, you know, if I need to. Because again, I would take whatever hit he swings me with the next turn to get this out of my way. So anyway, I hope that that made sense. That was just a quick game that I wanted to show y'all. And then I go against another blue-green, just Sanji, though, this time. This was a really cool deck here. Okay, and this this was the... I, again, this version of the deck we'll look at in a second, or we'll look at right after this game. It, it's starting to feel like maybe I'm onto something with it, but but I still... I don't know how competitive it will be against, like, the absolute best decks. I'm going against a blue-green Sanji here, guys. Like, I get it. Trust me. I'm, I'm not delusional. I, I'm not... Um, you know, what's the word for it? I'm not trying to say this is the best deck out there, but it, it could be better than I think a lot of people realize. Um, and, and like I was saying from that last game, I think we want to go first. Like, see how he's able to put all this pressure on me? It must be nice, right? Okay, so I take that so I can clear up my life. Honestly, I probably should have blocked out with Shirahoshi there, but I have another blocker coming here. Go ahead and uh, do a little cycle. I've got two Gekka Moria, so I trash one. I have two Ice Ages, I trash one. Wish I hadn't trashed the Ice Age, by the way. That was, that was one thing that I was like, eh, probably, should, probably shouldn't trash the Ice Age here. Okay, swing eight into face. I think the right... Okay, I do counter out. I was going to say, I, I should have probably just given, given him the Shirahoshi, to be honest. But I have no idea what's in this blue-green Sanji deck. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so right here, he does have a six-cost 8k on the board. That is kind of a problem. But I don't have a great way of, way of dealing with a six-cost card. So it's like, okay, am I really about to Ice Age Suru this? And the answer is yes. About to Ice Age Suru it. It does show me my next card is a Kikinojo. That's a good thing. That's a very good thing there. I'll play out Viola. I'll look at what's coming in his life. Adjust it how I want it. And then I can go from here. I'm going to swing seven to life because I already have two blockers. Okay, he 2k, 1k's out. And now I'm going to swing eight at him. And he's going to take that. And I know what it is, right? It was that uh, Edward Weevil card. Okay, now... He drops a nine cost Zoro on me. That's pretty spicy, right? That's that's uh that's pretty spicy. Oh man, this whole time I've had my my uh, my camera down there. I should have had it over here. Got to restart the video. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, for those who don't know, I do all these videos in one take. The only thing that ever takes me a while to get started on these videos is the intro. Sometimes I'll like mess up on the intro and be like, ah, oh, let me just redo that real quick. But typically speaking, I, like I don't do any edits or anything like that. In the future, I'll probably do edits like after this school year when I have more time to to dedicate. To, uh, to to doing this, I'll probably I'll probably change. But but yeah, for the time being, I do these in, in a single take. Um, a lot of people are probably like, yeah, we can tell. It's, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so right here, I'm like, uh, I've got three blockers. He's got three swings on one character. How do we how do we make this work? So I swing in with with the the, the, the Sabo's just going to town right now. That's that Sabo's just doing work. So it's like, okay, he knows that and he has to take it out. But I'm like, okay. I'll use a zero cost block on it first to make him, you know, use stuff this turn. I let him have it that time. I probably should have used the um, the three cost, uh, excuse me, the the viola there. But you know, it's a it's a tough call. He doesn't want to attack enemy right here because he doesn't want to give me the kikinojo. 
Okay, he has six cards in hand, by the way. I really wanted to hit him with this, with, with this uh, seven cost ace, but it just never worked out properly. Is this thing on 2x speed? Yeah, it's on 2x speed. Sorry, guys, it's just taking a while. Um, <clears throat> I love the blue-green Sanji, like, what it is. I, I just wish it was so much better. Like, I wish the effect was, like... I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think. I don't know. This goes back to what I was saying with um i wish they would print vanillas that had no counter on them and they were just 1000 extra power so like a three cost would be instead of being a 5k it'd be a three cost 6k with no counter i think that'd be really cool okay so swing at him play gecko moria minus four to his um whatever that guy's name is um doflamingo hiyori resets my top life card i'm able to ko it that way now i use viola i just get that card out of the way because i need to keep i need to keep my uh blockers on the board here because he has a nine cost Zoro trying to kill me right notice what I did here though he has to swing into my face now if he wants to try to win this game now I have zero counter in hand zero right let me I'm pretty sure yeah Shanks doesn't have a counter I have zero counter in hand but I do have four blockers and two life okay I, I give him the Shirohoshi blocker first of course let's see what he wants to do here Again, I'm sorry, guys. This is in 2x speed. So he had he got three out of four um, Sanji's pull off that game, or this game. That's why he has so many more cards in hand than I do, I think. I, I mean, I could be wrong, but he, he was just drawing gas, man. He was drawing straight heat. Okay, just waiting on this guy to swing. Swings for six. I get the Kikinocha trigger. We knew that was on top. Okay, he pulls back Doflamingo and plays out the three-cost guy. I'm gonna block I'm gonna take that one. Now I've got a 2k counter. I'm gonna block out of one with my viola here. And he's gonna swing for nine more, block with the other viola. Okay, so there is absolutely no way, right? There is no there's absolutely no possible way to survive next turn with that with that uh with anything, right? I just I, I won't be able to survive. So it's like, okay, time to do a little bit of math. We're gonna swing nine. See how you like a nine. Okay, so watch this. So the guy gives me his blocker i'm like okay well if that's the case let's do nine more hang on i'm trying to do i'm doing a little bit of math you know in, in the real time there but the, the answer is swing nine but look what he gives me look what he gives me here instead of going down to his last life card which is just as dangerous but instead of going down to his last life card look what he gives me okay He's about to, like I said, it's taking a while. He's got six cards in hand, and look what he gives. It's like a 2K and three 1Ks. Feels bad. That's when you know they're in trouble. Boom. 2K, three 1Ks. I'm like, oh, really? Okay, well, let me swing seven at you with Kairos here, because that will definitely get through. There's no way that's not getting through, because he was using all those 1Ks. And then I can swing 11 at his face with uh, Gekka Moria. Uh, he quit out too fast. Uh, let's see what he had at the end there. Will, will, will it show? Oh, well. Wait, let me pl play. Pause. Oh, there. oh, he had two Doflamingos in hand. Very cool. So he had, he had two Doflamingos in hand. Okay, let me move my face back before I forget. So now, the final part of the video here. Let me go ahead and um, not go, let me go to this. So here's where we are, guys. This is, um, you know, these are the decks right here that I was running. Let me, uh, let me save this thing. Okay, and go to... There's three decks I was running. This was the first one. Um, the Corti Coliseum. This was like the Dress Rosa version. Um, it was okay, but it, it, I wasn't running Viola though. See, that's another thing is I didn't really I didn't really put everything together just yet. Like I like the you know the Viola card. Let me see. Uh, Vi Viola, this card here. This would have been a great addition to the deck, but it was only running two of the Hinas. But it was in one of these Dressrosa games that I was playtesting on where I was like, okay, this Hina card is actually just, like, really, really good. Let me see something real quick. Um, <clears throat> all right. Yeah, th this card is uh, very, very good. The Hina. So that's when I was like, okay, it's time to make revisions. And um, let, me, let me mess this up real quick. Um, this... Th so that's what I was going to say. Sorry, guys. I got so sidetracked there. One of my kids messaged me on Discord. Then I, I, I basically upgrade the deck to this. Don't worry, we're going to go in and out of these decks, you know, multiple times. I guess I do have to put these glasses on because I just can't see like I used to. I'm going blind. 
I've actually always needed glasses for the past, like, you know, since I, I think since I was like fourth or fifth grade. Okay, so we have Kuzan. So, so this deck was like all over the place. This was where I was like, okay, I'm just going to try and put together all the cards that work really well so far. That's where I got to, because I don't think I even had Shirahoshi in the first version, did I? No, I didn't. I didn't have the four cost Shirahoshi in here. I only had two of the Hinas, and this was like a heavy Dressrosa package. But then I hopped over to this version, where I was running the four Shirahoshis, four of the Hinas. Just, this is where I figured out, because I think, let me see something real quick. No, I wasn't really really running any KO in here. But at the same time, in this version, I started figuring out, like, okay, this package is excellent. The little Hina, uh, Kikinojo, Momonosuke package is excellent. The Yamatos were excellent. Rebecca, Gekko, Moria were good. Hina, Shirahoshi, and the, and the Hinas. So it was almost like, okay, now we've got a little bit of wiggle room, though. What do we want to do with these four Kuzans and these four New Gates? And that's where I finally got to this version, where it was like, okay... Let me try out the aces. I went down to Gecko Moria just to clear up space. I tried the Kuzan. I never drew the card in testing, but I was able to fit in the Viola, which was really nice as well. The Ice Ages were insanely good because I think, yeah, notice I didn't have the Ice Age in the first, the first or the second one. I had the Hawkator Patchwork, which is which is good too because it's minus three, but it's just simply not as good in my opinion as Ice Age in this deck, in this deck in particular. Like, it, it's still good, but this this Ice Age is dominant. Like, it, it's just a one-cost KO of five or less. That's what it says in this deck. And trigger KO of three or less, is, you know, that's not exactly bad either. The Shanks seems too situational for what I'm trying to do. Like, maybe as a one or a two of. And, th and that's one thing I want to mention as well. Let me see if I type in four. Will it bring up? Yeah. So, these two cards here, they're situationally good at best. So, like, maybe having a one of Edward Newgate and a one of Shanks. You guys tell me what y'all think in the comment section below about these. I, I'm not a huge fan of them, personally. They're, they're just not really my favorite. Um, but they're not bad. It's not that they're bad. They're, they're, they're just not really... <clears throat> I, I don't know if they fit what we're doing in this deck. That's the thing. Um, Kuzan, same thing. Maybe that's what you do. You just run, like, three one ofs that are just what you should test until you figure out if you, you like or dislike one of them. Gekko Moria, though, huge. He, he is the gas you need in this deck, where it's like, okay, you can bring back a Shirahoshi for a four cost. You can bring back Kikinojo or Rebecca, or even potentially Hina, but why would you do that? You can go Rebecca into Hina. But think about it. You have so many targets with Gekko Moria. Let me move this back to here. So with Gekko Moria for four cost, you're able to grab Rebecca, you're able to grab Kikinojo and Shirahoshi for your four cost. And look at all these two cost uh, spots. These are actually very decent as well. You've got four Viola, four One-Legged Toy Soldier, and four Subarus. So you see what I'm saying where it's like, and Hiyori, excuse me, I almost somehow forgot Hiyori. Um, that too, though, let me see one thing about the, the middle one here. Perona is another good choice there. That is one thing I think I would change right away. I think this um, One-Legged Toy Soldier is good, but I think Perona is probably better in that spot. But then again, maybe it's not because I already have so many strong four-cost cards that you want to get back with Gecko Moria. Because you want your Rebecca's that get back Hina's, and then you want your uh, Kikinojo's or your Shirahoshi's. Yeah. But I will say this, guys. So far, from my from the limited amount of playtesting I've been able to do, this version of the deck was the best so far. And, and it's, like, pretty soundly better than the others. This one was getting there, right? Like, this one right here. This one's not a lot different, actually. It's a little tighter of a, of a, of a, of a group. But the Kuzans ended up not being... Let me see. Did I keep Kuzan in here? Uh, that's right. I put in this Kuzan. So that's probably what I would do. So in, you know, in conclusion, right? In conclusion, I would probably drop this Kuzan. I don't know. I still want to try this Kuzan. I'm, I'm not going to say I would drop him. I would drop one Shanks for another Kuzan so I could finally get to try him. And then I would drop one more Shanks for that other new gate, like I said, to see how much I like these cards over the course of a lot of playtesting. And then I would also like to fit in... Let me see, I've got 4, 8, 12. I have 12 2K counters. Maybe I drop down two of the one, one legged toy soldiers. And I would really, you know, what, there was a card I really wanted to try. It was uh, Laboon. I, I would like to try Laboon, this, this one in particular, because I think this one could be very good. Speaking of that, real quick, there was one other thing I wanted to look at when I was doing my, my uh, search on here. And if you look up Animal, there might be something here, guys. There might be something here with this. Um, so where is Smile? Will it look up, um, oh, I forget, it, it, what's her name, Otama? Here, this card. 
So this card's interesting because it has on play place up to one of your opponent. Oh, it's opponent's animal. Never mind. I totally misread this card because I read this. I was like, oh, place up to one of your animal or smile type characters on top of your life area face up. <laughs> but no, it's your opponent's animal or smile. So never mind. Totally scratch that. Because what I was going to say was it would be really cool if Laboon could, could fill that spot where we could use him and then protect him. But for some reason, that Otama card exists the way it does. <laughs> when, it, when it should, in my personal opinion, this card should read on play, place up to one of your or your opponent's animal or smile type characters on the top of their life area face up. Then it would be really cool because it'd be a way to protect the card and a way to gain life. It'd be, it'd be awesome. But anyway, that'd probably be a little too strong. Who knows? Someone would probably find, find a way to break that. But I do want to try this card out. So moving forward, what I would probably try, like I was saying, let me type in four for four uh, emperors. I'd probably go up uh, one of this guy... Kuzan, go one of these, <clears throat> you know, so that I'm at uh, two of them. And then I would probably go down two, uh, 2k counters here and try out Laboon. There we go. Something like this. Because I do think this card could be very strong. And if you could somehow protect him with all these blockers we have, like we got four Shirohoshi, four Viola, three Sabo. Maybe go down to, maybe go down to two Sabo, actually. Sorry, guys. I'm like kind of um, deck building while I go here. So this, this is probably what I would want to go with. Maybe even go down one of these for going up one Rebecca. We'll have to see. Anyway, long story short, I think this is the direction to take the deck going forward. Y'all tell me if y'all have had better success with another version so I could try that out in the future. I'm always open-minded about this stuff, guys. I always try to keep an open mind. And, you know, however you say it, I, I always want to... Uh, try different decks and try all the stuff that's not meta and make it work. That, that's just, it's a challenge to me, so it's exciting, it's fun. But yeah, that's about it, guys. That's it for this video. Let me make sure uh, I've got this little checkpoints over here. Yep, so we went over the leader and all the cards one by one. We went over the, the different the different games on the sim, and then we did a, did a full deck analysis and conclusion. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That, these are a lot of fun for me to make. I know these are, this was a longer video than normal, but this kind of stuff is, you know, for, for some people, some people really love these videos. Other people are like, oh, one hour video, skip, you know, and I get it. And, and like I said at the very beginning of the, of the video, at the bottom of the, of the, in the, in the comment section, I'll have this all like mapped out where you can go to each little spot. Right, guys, um, we do have a Discord, you know, if, if you liked what you saw today, if you enjoy doing this kind of uh, brainstorming, theory crafting new decks, you know, off meta decks, by all means, come hang out with us on the Discord. Uh, and we talk about this stuff all the time on the Deck Theory Crafting channel. And, um, I'll have that information. That information's on the About Me of my YouTube. So you can hop on there and check that out any check that out anytime. And yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe, guys. And until next time, peace.